Welcome to On the Issues. I'm Phoenix City Councilwoman Thelda Williams. The City of Phoenix has formal relationships with 10 sister cities across the globe. Through sister cities, we connect to people in Europe, Asia, North America, and the Middle East with commercial, education, and exchange programs. Each winter, we celebrate our sister cities with Chinese Week. We'll hear more about that later in the show. First, we're going to learn more about our sister cities and where they are and how the program is helping us to bring us together. Phoenix Sister Cities President and CEO Paula West is here to tell us more. Paula, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Big, I'm a big fan, as you know, Yes, you forever. are. <laughs> and that we very much appreciate. And first of all, you got to tell us the list sister, of sister cities. Sister cities. Okay, I'm on the spot now. Yes, it's a test. Uh, Calgary, Canada, uh, Catania, Italy, Chengdu, China, Ennis, Ireland, Hermosillo, Mexico, Himeji, Japan, uh, Grenoble, France, uh, Ramatgan, Israel, Prague, Czech Republic, and Taipei, Taiwan. Of Good which job. I may say that for our, your, we have city council liaisons for each sister city relationship. And we thank you for being liaison for Taipei and for Calgary. You're very welcome. I enjoy the people from there very, very much. And over the years, I've been able to visit not all of them, but probably half of the, our right. sister cities. And they are such great people. Um, the exchanges are wonderful. Talk a little about what you do as a CEO and how we build these relationships. Well, the way that actually the way the relationships are, are built is really through com strong community support. Uh, there's, uh, we have a group of people within the community that may come to a council person like you and say, we would really like to have a bond or have a relationship with uh, one of the cities, the culture that we're, we're coming from. Or maybe that city that wants to uh, come and have a relationship with Phoenix and it can be for educational or arts and culture or uh, business purposes. There's a lot of municipal cooperation. Um, the what I do as CEO and and president is I primarily staff a board of directors. There's a there's a, a commission, mm -hmm. and uh, though they act as the board of directors for not for Phoenix Sister Cities. And I think one of the things maybe a lot of people don't know Thelda, is that Phoenix Sister Cities is a nonprofit organization. It's 501c3. Uh, all of the all of the programs, all of the uh, travel, everything else is privately funded. Uh, but those relationships are for the purpose of two cultures, two countries, two cities getting to know each other. And I think that Phoenix uh, actually, Phoenix Sister Cities actually serves as an international presence uh, for the for the city of Phoenix. Uh, we bring the world to Phoenix, and we take. Phoenix out to the world, and the whole uh, point of the board of the board of directors is to oversee uh, these sister city relationships. Um, I'm kind of going back and forth here, but one of the things uh, there could not be, there usually cannot be successful sister city relationships without uh, the support of our elected officials and our city management. Now, each city also has a, a kind of its own commission. I don't know if that's what you call it of residents that are very interested in that city or So culture. once that relationship, what happens formally, what happens with the relationship is it's mayor to mayor, city to city. They sign an affiliation, say, okay, we want to get to know each other. We want to exchange people, products, uh, information. And then what happens is that there is our volunteers who they say, okay, I really like Calgary. I'd really like to know about it. Or I'm from, I'm a Canadian, I'm from Calgary. And so they're going to form a committee and they're going to do various type projects. Each one of those committees, uh, it, they can, you can do anything you want with sister cities. Uh, so for instance, Calgary, uh, one of the primary things that Calgary does, Canada Week is coming up. We have Canada Week, Chinese Week, and Arizona, Arizona Matsuri all in February. And so with Canada Week, what the Calgary Committee does is they have a golf tournament and uh, there is this huge uh, Canadian-American picnic out uh -huh. at South Mountain Park. Absolutely and fantastic. And it is huge. Yeah, oh, it is. It's absolutely huge. It's fun, great food, great entertainment, fun games for the kids. Um, and, but one of the specific things that they do 
um, that committee that they work on is they bring youth that have, have um, been burned and bring them down here and in cooperation with the Arizona Foundation for Burns, they go up to Camp Courage. And these are kids that maybe have uh, never, haven't wanted to take off a shirt or go swimming or anything like that. So there's that type of thing. Then there's also, as with, with, uh, as with Taipei, there's with all of our sister cities, let's say it that way, one, I think one of, the most, uh, m one of the most meaningful things that we do is our Youth Ambassador Exchange. And our Youth Ambassador Exchange is, is uh, it's an application selection process. We've just finished the application process. Kids are going to start going through interviews. Parents are interviewed also, which is a little scary for the kids. <laughs> I didn't think about that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> They're selected, we, we train them. They go through like uh, three months of academy sessions that we call them. They travel to our sister cities. They're home hosted for three weeks, bring their home host sister, brother and sister back here and they're here for three weeks. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, how do uh, kids apply for this? Oh, it's online, phoenixsistercities.org. And as I said, the application process is finished now, uh, but uh, it's open to sophomores and juniors uh, in, in sophomores, high school sophomores and juniors. You have to be a U.S. citizen and a Phoenix resident. How exciting. And it's, yeah, you fill out the application and then you're, you're, it's, it's determined whether you get an interview or not. I've had the privilege, you've invited me to welcome them home, yeah. some of our Phoenix kids that have returned. And they are so alive and excited oh, and yeah. thrilled with all they've experienced. Yeah, it, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And most of the kids, when they start going through, they say, well, I want to go to Europe. You know, I want to, I want to go to Grenoble or I want to go to Ennis or I went. And then, um, then the kids that are particularly, uh, the kids that are selected for like one of the Asian countries are a little, you know, I don't know that. I don't know what I'm going to, I don't know if I'll like that. And then uh, the, the kids that are selected for Calgary and, and Hermosillo, they think, oh, it's like going yeah. next door. They come back and every single one of them, we always promise, you will never regret that you did this. It's a life-changing experience. It's really, really wonderful to see. And it's a life-changing experience for the parents also. One of the things I really like about it, it gets the kids and the families involved in the city they're living in. That's true. That's true. How do, how do you find uh, people who will host the ones coming from our sister cities? Just, you mean if they aren't, if they, if they are youth ambassadors, they are required to host. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a, it's a it's commitment a, it's for not only the child, but the parent, yeah. too. So it's like, it's a six-week What commitment. happens if you can't speak the language? No. It's ma absolutely it amazing. Everyone figures it out one way or another. And uh, most of it, well, you've traveled with us, you know. I mean, there are- Only they're... Americans can't speak <laughs> multiple languages, <laughs> exactly, I've learned. Exactly, exactly. But, but there, there are so many people that speak English, right? Yes. But not only that, there's always a way that you can figure it out. Of, uh, whether it's hand motions or pointing or, or whatever. But the, when these kids go into the homes, uh, believe me, the majority of the, the, all of the kids have had English and they know English. Now the parents not, may, may not. Uh, and then it's wonderful to listen to the kids' stories of how they learn how to communicate. Oh, I bet it's fun. Yeah, it really is. It's absolutely fantastic. So what exciting um, adventures are you planning for this year? Beside, uh, besides besides the, the youth ambassador, <laughs> which is big. Well, as I said, this month alone we have Canada Week, mm -hmm. uh, we have Chinese Week, which we're going to hear about, and we have Arizona Matsuri. Arizona Matsuri is the our Himeji relationship, and um, it is held at Heritage Square. It's uh, the last month of the Febu of, of February, and it's there are eighty to ninety thousand people that attend this festival. It's absolutely fantastic. It's you can eat your way through it, and you can. <laughs> and you can buy things. Then we also, we have a, a delegation, a 40th anniversary delegation uh, that is going to be traveling to Himeji, Japan. Anyone that wants to pay the fare is welcome to come with us. It's absolutely fantastic. They just go to your website and yep, find out? Yep, go to the website and then we will be planning a, uh, a trip to Prague also. That's pretty exciting. I, I'm, 
I and just said me. you had Calgary and Taipei. You have Prague and Taipei. I know. But I thought <laughs> I'm I was, so sorry. Uh, that's all right. I thought maybe I was getting a third one because I did no. have. Uh, yeah, you did have Calgary. I did. Now you have Prague and, and Taipei. So. But they're a lot of fun. Yeah, so I, I enjoy them all. Yeah. I really do. People ask me, what's your favorite? And they don't believe me when I say, I honestly don't have a favorite. Oh, I right. honestly don't. It's, every single one is a different experience. And uh, it's, it's the other wonderful thing about Sister Cities is not only the international portion of it, Thilda, it's also the people that you get to know here. And, and you kind of might have the same interests. And uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, organization. It, it truly is. And I, I always have been a, a big supporter of it, but I always thought City of Phoenix kind of misses the boat because I think we should use those established I mean, you're talking 40th anniversary. Right. Uh, we haven't had a new sister city in a long time. Yes. And I mean, we, these are long-term established relationships yes. and there are humongous business potential. Yes. yes. And when you look at where our sister cities are, um, they're right in the heart of a lot of commerce. Well, the, I'm a proponent of uh, more sister cities for, for Phoenix. And the reason being, um, that a first-tier city, we have very few cities compared to other cities. Uh, you know, Los Angeles has like 32. You know, we've got Portland, uh, which has 27. We have New York, we have Los Angeles. Uh, but I think primarily in what you're saying, there can be a lot of different types of relationships. Mm -hmm. And there can be the ones that we're talking about that are one-to-one are -one people or kids or whatever. Uh, but there's also others that can be for economic reasons. We have uh, communities out there uh, that um, are very well represented and deserve a relationship with another city. Oh, I agree. <laughs> I, I, I think it's uh, very important yeah. and I like to see us continue to grow and uh, to develop more and more relationships right. with those. And actually, I'd really like to see us take advantage because just when you Think of our Ramadan. Israel has the most patents of anyone in the world on water. I didn't know that. And conserving water, uh, cleaning, I mean, right. the whole gamut. We should use that. I, I just feel yes. so strongly about that. So, well, I'm excited for this year and for the upcoming events, and uh, I'm our next guest is going to talk about Chinese Week, which is always a hoot. Yeah, it Lots is. Lots of fun. <laughs> Very dramatic. Right. So, um, And a wonderful banquet at the end. Yes. <laughs> it takes a while to get used to having 10 courses. Right. I always remember the one, uh, one of my first trips, and uh, it was, I think, to Taiwan. And it was a 30-course dinner. Yes. And I was... I studied like crazy on the cultures because I was so afraid I'd cause an international incident. <laughs> I'd say something wrong. Never. I never did figure out totally what we were eating. Right. It is probably best. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, please stay with us to hear what's on tap for this year's Phoenix Chinese Week. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Each winter, we celebrate the rich Chinese culture right here in the desert at Phoenix Chinese Week. This year's event is at Margaret T. Hans Park in downtown Phoenix. 
Joining Paula and me to share the details of this exciting event is Phoenix Chinese Week President Elaine Wong. Elaine, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Saldo. We're pleased to be here to promote this wonderful event. It's and thank you for chairing it because um, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. I, I didn't I didn't anticipate that it was going to engulf my entire life for a year. <laughs> but you know, the fruits of all all the labor of all the volunteers and our committee, I think will be will pay off at the at the festival. And when is the festival? The festival is going to be February 10th through the 12th, and it will be held at Margaret T. Hans Park, which is located at 1202 um, North Third Street, which is just east of Central Avenue, and it's behind the Phoenix Public Library. Mm -hmm. So we take the entire park for our festival. So what's there? Oh my gosh, is I you have a couple of hours, I can share with you everything, but well, some of the highlights of our um, our cultural and cuisine festival are is our children's pavilion. That's something that attracts young and old, all ages, uh, even though it's, it's directed towards the children. Many adults like to visit our children's pavilion and learn how to make various paper crafts, have uh, learn a little bit of calligraphy, um, craft some lanterns, so there's a lot of activities. So you can visit our cultural village, which you can uh, learn about the history and some of the culture and the inventions by the Chinese. You can learn to uh, use the Chinese yo-yo. I mean, there's so many different things there. It's amazing. Uh, you can, we also have a mahjong booth. You can try your hand at learning how to play mahjong. Really? Because, you know, that's a really popular game now, even in, in the Western culture. But uh, of course, it was invented by the Chinese, and it's a wonderful pastime. So if you know how to play gin rummy, you can do that. We also introduced last year our um, uh, Chinese uh, costume photo booth. So if you would like to transform yourself into a Chinese princess or the princess dowager or Chinese prince, you can go in there and put on a traditional Chinese costume and take some little selfies, <laughs> post it and everything. So there, and, and we have a couple of backdrops there, absolutely beautiful. And of course, a festival wouldn't be complete without the wonderful cuisine. Oh, yes. We have so many different Chinese um, uh, booths, food booths, and trucks, plus other, you know, other uh, um, food fair that's available at the festival too. So you get to sample a little bit of our of our uh, wonderful, you know, Chinese dishes that we eat. So, and then the, the, the thing that also attracts the folks coming out to the festival is our uh, performances that are ongoing for the, throughout the three days. So come out, you can see dances, traditional Chinese dances. Um, there's also playing of musical instruments, um, martial arts. And of course, again, we have to have the lion dance. In fact, we start our festival each year with the lion dance who whisk away the demons to, so that all the prosperity that can be coming coming into everyone. So it's wonderful, and, and the line dances will be performed throughout the weekend as well. So, oh my gosh, I, there's so many many more things. We have a koi fish exhibit, which is also very very popular. A lot of award winning koi fish are there. It's wonderful. I, I don't, there's just so many things. Is it's there a endless. fee? No, our three day uh, festival is um, free admission. So we do invite everyone to come and we encourage them to, you know, come in and spend the entire day with us because there's so many things to experience that I think they, everyone would enjoy it. Well, Paula, how do you interface with this event? Well, Phoenix Sister Cities has two Chinese sister cities, uh, Chengdu, China and Taipei, Taiwan. And so to make things even, Mm -hmm. uh, the Chinese Week Committee, it was a committee actually, yes, who decided that what they would do is they would alternate years of featuring one of the cities. 
And so uh, and this, this year, year is the Taipei, Taipei Committee. Right. Yes, yes. And you would have to come and visit uh, our big, the large dragon boat. Mm -hmm. it's, it takes up like one corner of the uh, park out there. Very, it's very colorful to see something I've seen that. It. Absolutely yes, isn't gorgeous. It? I know it is very and unique. Just, and just to haul it there for the three day <laughs> festival <laughs> is is a real undertaking. You have to have security at night. Yes, we do. I, yes, we I do. We so. have to since it is a three day event, and um, we, and you know we we have to the vendors and so forth. There's, you can pick up souvenirs and the different vendor booths and there's a lot of demonstrations and even in our cultural village we have cooking demonstrations in there so you might even get to do a little free sample of some oh. food if you're there in time for the performances. So you know if, if someone wants to find out more about our Chinese Wheat Festival, of course we have our brochure which I brought to you today, but they can visit our website at www.phoenixchineseweek.org and our schedule of events is posted out there and very shortly we will also have the um, events of all the performances throughout the three days. We're still finalizing everything like that. And so, they can also go to www.phoenixsistercities.org exactly, and that will, exactly. that will take it. Yes. So, it's the year of the rooster. This is the year of the rooster 4715. So, so, so that gives you an idea how long the Chinese have been around. You know, long, I mean, it, Chinese New Year celebration will actually start on January 28th. And um, unlike the Western New Year, which is only lasts a day with, um, with um, un promises or, or resolutions that are unkept. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Chinese New Year <clears throat> runs 15 consecutive calendar days. So you have so, to make one every day? Yeah, we have to have a celebration every day. <laughs> it's huge. You have to make a new resolution every day? <laughs> no. It's hard no, to stick with it one. It is, it is. <laughs> but there are so many things that we have to do before yeah. the Chinese New Year that are customary and traditional, too. I remember growing up as a little girl, um, helping my mother doing a thorough spring cleaning, I mm -hmm. guess you might say, of the house, you know, because you want to clean it out, sweep out any, any evil spirits to be ready for the New Year when all the good spirits and all the good fortune comes in. Um, and all the preparation, days of preparation for our, um, you know, 10 course meal to share with family and friends. The Chinese culture is fascinating. And delicious. Yeah. yeah. It and is. And very delicious. It is delicious. <laughs> yeah, yes. It is. So let's talk about delicious. We invite the public to attend our Chinese New Year banquet also, which is uh, going to be held on Saturday, February 18th at Great Wall Restaurant. And in on our website, you can also get information to contact us to make reservations. It's not something they can just walk in and because we will fill that restaurant up for the evening and they can delight in 10 course banquet style dinner with very special dishes that are associated with our Chinese New Year. Plus we have entertainment as well. The cost of the dinner is only $45 per person for 10 courses. And we also have, as you both have attended our banquets in the past, we have the face changing master. Oh, yeah. He's always oh, fascinating. Yeah. I could sit and watch him yeah. all day long. I cannot figure out how he I cannot that. either. I tried to find out one time when I was watching his tent where he was changing. And and I asked him, can I come in and help you? Oh. He says, oh no, he can't yeah. do that. Was, you know, if I knew the secret, I wouldn't be here today. <laughs> so, yeah. In addition to that, another something new this year we have is um, the Phoenix Boys Choir. They will be performing at the festival on stage, but they have been invited to go to China and perform in 22 cities in China in the month of June. Oh. So we are, you know, collaborating with them, and so we invite them to also attend our banquet and sing a couple of songs in Mandarin. Kind of some oh, good wonderful. experience for these young boys. So we're very excited to have something like this new entertainment for our banquet this year. 
That's great. Is, isn't it? It, isn't it really it? is. I'm looking forward to hearing them too. These are boys ages from like 10 to 14 years of age. Mm -hmm. And you know, young young children's voices are just oh. wonderful. And they are so talented. They, they are they so really talented. Are. Are and masters. at such a young age to be so professional and travel overseas for basically the entire month of June. So again, that's that's yeah. something unique. You know, we we, we love knowing that, that um, um, our non-Asian friends here in the community and at large are interested in learning our language and our, our um, music. And so this is perfect that we're um, having the Phoenix Boys Choir with us this year too. So Something we didn't talk about is the fact that you are an award-winning program. Yes, we are. And I should, I, I, that, I should have brought that up. Uh, Phoenix Sister Cities has been awarded by Sister Cities International the best overall sister city program in cities over 500,000 won uh, nine times in the last 20 years. That's outstanding. Yeah, and uh, this last year we received an award for innovation in youth and education. And um, yeah, we're pretty, we're pretty oh, proud I'm of sure that. Oh, I'm sure you're very Because this is a perfect example. It, it is. is. It is. It, it, it is. is. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. It truly is a community effort, right. supported oh, and enjoyed. I know. I know. And, and we, you know, we couldn't we couldn't put on this festival since 1991 each year without the support of, of uh, organizations, sponsors, the Phoenix Sister Cities and, and all the many community organizations and community volunteers. Because it's a, it's a huge undertaking to put something like this. And we're growing each year. We're so excited. Well, I thank you, too, for coming today. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you for inviting us. Sharing all this information because we really want the public to show up um, and the community to know about you. I think that's what's so important. And to know they're invited to participate, not only in the festival. But in Phoenix Sister Cities. Yes. All you have to do is log right. on, call right. you, or whatever, and that's you're right. more than welcome. Yeah become yes. part of this. It's been a wonderful can't partnership. Can't do it without volunteers. No, you can't. And we're all volunteers. Yeah. And, and we welcome anyone who's interested in helping Phoenix Chinese to contact our website as well and, and join us. So, well, thank you very much. That's all the time we have for this month's On the Issues. If you have any questions or comments about this show, call my office, 602-262-7444, or visit my website at phoenix.gov slash district1. We'll see you next time on The Issues.